Hi guys, I hope you're doing great. In this video, we are going to use PySpark to solve an interview assignment I was given by one of the largest retail chains in the UK. At the time, I used Pandas to solve the problem. However, although Pandas does the job, they wanted me to use PySpark. On my screen, you can see part of the task description. We have two CSV files. One is the customer CSV file and contains information about customers, such as customer ID and the loyalty score. And then we have another CSV file, which is products.csv, which contains information about product, products, such as product ID, product description, and product category. And the last one is a folder containing two years of transactions in JSON format. You can see the JSON here, just actually one record in one JSON, and it contains the customer ID, a basket, which is a nested array uh, that contains product ID and price and the date of purchase. And the acceptance criteria for this task is to produce this output here, the customer ID, the loyal score, the product ID, the product category, and the purchase count. Actually, you can obtain this output very very uh, easily if you have already merged the tables and what essentially what we have to do here is load the csv files those two csv files load all the json files for all these transactions two years worth of transactions explode this array here flatten the json and join, merge all those tables together, join them together and perform a goodbye close based on product ID and customer ID and that would give you the purchase count. So this is the task. Now I have enhanced the task and when we merge or, and join you know, all those tables, then we are going to perform some more difficult queries using PySpark, just you know for our own benefit. Before we move into the code, I want to show you the data. I was given a data generator, it was a Python script that produced this data, this CSV files, the products CSV file, the customer CSV file, and the folder with the transactions. And inside this folder, you can see we have subfolders with a date as uh, the naming convention. Each folder represents one date and inside that folder we have the JSON, the transactions in JSON format. This is the data I was given in the interview and so two CSV files and a folder with uh, multiple JSON files. Now let's move into the code. Here is the code. We will go step by step and we will print out everything in every step so we know what we are doing. The first thing, the first thing we need to do is to load the CSV files. In a path, I provided all the file paths to our uh, CSV files and the transaction folders. And I pass this list here in our main function. I also used Python logging and I set the level to logging.info so everything above more severe than info and plus info as well is going to be displayed in our logs. Now in our main function I get this the first element in the list which is the customers which points to the customers.csv file and I pass it to this load. Uh, underscore csv function. I here you can see I define this load CSV function and I pass the file path. I use Spark. First, we need to import Spark session and create a Spark session here. Up here, it's a now Spark is a global variable. We create the Spark session by using Spark session dot builder dot app name whatever name you want here and get or create session get or create and that would create a session. Now in the try except statement inside, I used spark.read.option header true because the CSV files have headers.csv and I 
give the file path. Now that could return a PySpawn data frame with our columns with the CSV data for this uh, CSV. In the accept statement, I use the OS path, os.path.split file path, and one, which is the second element in the list, and that will give our file name. And I raise an error, so if there is some, if something went wrong, I know which file actually raised this error. Else, so if everything is okay, I use logic.info, CSV successfully loaded, and I return the data frame. Okay, so let me run this and see what we get when we load this CSV free CSV. And you will see now the data we are getting for the PySpark data frame DF underscore customers because here we provided the path to the customer's data frame. Give it a second. PySpark is a bit slow. We spin that. We have to spin up the cluster, and here we have our first data frame. It contains the customer ID and the loyalty score. We only display the first, the top 20 records. Now let's do the same for the second uh, CSV. And the second CSV, we have provided the path for the products.csv file. And using the same function again, we run it and we will see two data frames now the DF customers and the DF products. It's still running, and here we have the second data frame. It contains product ID, product description, and product category. Great, so that was the easy part. Now we have to load all the transactions for these two years. And I created a separate function for that because first of all, it's, it's in JSON format, so we cannot use the same function. And you will see then we will have to apply a few transformations as well, like explode the array, the nested array. Let me uncomment this and let's move to the load JSON function here. I created here. I provide the file path for the JSON and we do a spark.read.json.file path. Now if if we scroll down, you will see I provided the file path for the transactions folder. So for all the uh, only for the folder, but not for its subfolder. So in PySpark, we can do a, or let's say a bulk load of the JSON files. You don't have to provide like in Pandas each, uh, the path for each file. You just do a bulk load and you provide the folder. And now that will go inside the subfolders and load all the data. And here, so in one go, we are we are going to get a data frame with all the all the data for two years, which is great. And you cannot achieve that in, in pandas. In pandas, I had to do provide for each path. I had to create, you know, a pandas data frame and all this kind of stuff. So that's why they told me why I didn't use PySpark. And you could do a bulk load, load everything in one go. And yeah, it's pretty convenient. They were right. In the exception block now, if there is an error, just raise an exception. And here, what we do here is we have to explode the basket, but actually before we proceed with that, let's do a dot show here and I will show you the data frame. Here we are. Let me let me comment this out for a second because we don't need that. We only want to see the PySpark we receive from the JSON files which is actually, you know, the difficult part of this exercise. That was the difficult part. And here you see we're getting a PySpark data frame. It has basket, which has nested 
a nested array and the customer ID, the date of purchase, and D, which is the folder name with the date here. Now, this is not actually useful, but we don't care. What we want to do here is actually explode this basket um, array, right? Because it has data. So for each customer ID, we are going to receive two records or what uh, actually the number of records this array has. So if it has two dictionaries inside this array, we will get two records for this customer ID, one that would have this uh, as uh, price and the product ID 420 and P06 and one, uh, another record with uh, price 104 and product ID, whatever that is. So let me do that here. Let me do a df.show and you will see what I'm talking about. But essentially you can use explode to, let's say, uh, explode this array here, the nested arrays into separate records. And you can do that using df dot with column. You select the column and then you do an explode. Explode is coming from the PySpark SQL functions. Just import it from PySpark.SQL.functions, import the explode function, and you will be able to use it. Now let me uh, let me run this df dot so. I will show you what we are getting after the explode function is applied. And here we have, yeah, you see here now we split the records into separate records for each uh, element in the array. You see here now we have for customer C3, we have three records instead of one and the explode function is quite useful you will i'm sure you will have to use it at some point because there are nested arrays most of the time so here for example you are getting three records for customer c3 we are getting a dictionary with price 420 and product id uh, p06 and then price for you know, 1041 and PO3 product ID and then price 180 and PO6 product ID, etc. etc. The same for C4, C5, and C7 or C8. So that's what the explode function does. It's it we we split the array into multiple records. Now how can we create separate columns for this here for the this basket if we want because here this is a price right and this is a product id how can we create a separate columns for these two elements here one for price one for product id and there are two ways the first one is to actually select let me uncomment this and the first one is using select and what we can do is df.select and do this one df .customer ID, df date of purchase df basket dot price and df basket dot product id so how can you get this nested column here you can get it by using df dot basket dot price because it's a nested column the, actually let me show you the schema before we continue uh, and you will see what i mean by that because now it although it, it doesn't appear so these are columns in the schema so let me open that and run it again and you will see the schema and you will see there are in, underneath basket underneath this column it, there is 
there are two separate columns, but we cannot see it here. You see here we have basket and then as a struct and then we have price as long and product ID as string. You see there are nested columns. So how can we flatten you know those columns? That's actually what we're going to do. Again, we, uh, like I mentioned before, we need to use dot select and here in the we go step by step and we select the basket and identifier and then dot price which is the nested identifier and the product id and what we can do here is to rename those columns so if we say df2 dot with column renamed and we provide the column name which is basket.price as you can see because it's a nested column and we'll provide a new column name like price and for product id so we are going to replace basket.product id into product id so let me run this let's comment that for a second and now we will get price and product id as two separate columns because that's what we need now they are nested and they are not in a usable state but now after we flattened you know the columns you can see here we have customer id date of purchase price and product id and this is what we want for the final result but there is another way of doing that. This is one way with dot select and we select the nested columns and then we can rename the columns and get the results we want, right? So uh, let me bring that in again. And instead of select, we can use the resilient distributed data set so we create so we convert the data frame into rdd resilient distributed data set and then we apply the map function and inside the apply the map function so we have to define a function here as an input and here we defined an anonymous function a lambda function but you can apply whatever function you want and we are getting each record here in the data frame in the resilient distributed data uh, data set for each record we return a tuple with the columns we want here we want customer id date of purchase basket price and basket product id and again you see we are using the nested annotation here so we go step step by step like in this hierarchy in the columns x which is the record dot basket which is the column dot product id which is the nested column and then when we close the bracket for the map function here and we do a 2df which is to convert the resilient distributed data set into data frame again and we pass the column names as a list and that and this would return the same exactly the same result let me print that out for you so you can see i'm not saying you know uh, nonsense and it doesn't matter which way you want to do things but they they both work and i'm pretty sure may, there might be you know other several ways i i used i tried those two but you might find other ways too so here we are getting customer id date of purchase price and product id exactly the same results with the dot select and with column renamed, we can create, we can convert the data frame into resilient distributed data set, apply the map function for each record, and we provide you know this anonymous function or whatever function you want, and then we convert 
the RDD back to data frame and we return the data frame. What's the next step? Well, so we have three, three data frames up to this point, the DF pro customers, DF products, and DF transactions. We need to merge those data frames, right? And we can do that by actually I created another function which is called merge data frames and I pass all the data frames here into this function. And inside this function, I merge the data frames. Here I'm using uh, the args variable, star args, and I unpack the variables here. Uh, and this is the last one of the data frames. You can specify the you know the the data frames here in three different variables like you know df one, df two, or df three, or you just use args. It's the same thing. I used args and I got the la the last data frame, which was the transaction data frame, because we passed the transactions data frame you know at the end and what i'm doing here is i rename this this data frame into trans and then i do a join with the first data frame which is for the customer data frame that i rename as cast and this is the join condition based on customer id and here is the join type which is inner now why i created an alias for each data frame before i joined because if you don't do that PySpark is going to merge is going to join those data frames but the customer id it will have duplicated customer id let me uh actually let's do the same thing without the alias and I will and if you will see what I'm talking about and dot so and here we have it and let's and okay so now if we do that you will see we are going to get duplicated customer ID columns. And the problem is, so when you want to drop this customer ID column, the second one, the duplicated one, how are you going to do that? Here you can see we have duplicated customer ID columns, right? And we don't need the, se the second one. And we want to drop this column. If we drop when you drop a column you have to provide the name of the column but if we provide customer id it's going to drop both columns and we can do a rename here and after we have joined but we can also do we can also use alias like i showed you before so let me uh, bring that back in we have again we create alias for this data frame and then we create another alias for the second data frame we join those tables and then we do a select trans which is the alias for the first data frame dot star and it's going to select all the columns from the transactions data frame and from the customer table we only select the loyalty score if we now do a df.show you will see that we will not get duplicated columns this is very this is a common um let's say issue when you join tables using PySpark. and then duplicated columns here we're getting customer id date of purchase price product id and the loyalty score perfect now we have to do the same for the second 
data frame. And here, what we have to do is create let's say in the F, we, uh, we provide an alias for this one, which is the this new joint data frame we created here. Then here we provide the new alias for that, which is new table or whatever you want. We join with the second data frame, which is the product data frame, and we provide an alias for that as well, which is product. This is the join condition based on product ID. And this is the join type, which is inner. And then we perform a select from the new table dot star. And we are getting everything from the data frame, from the existing data frame. And from the product data frame, we are getting only product description and product category. And that would give us our new data frame, our final data frame, actually. Let's print that and see what we are getting. And now we will have a joint data set, like a data set that would have a data frame that would have all the columns we need in order to perform our analysis. We have the customer ID, the date of purchase, the price, the product ID, the loyalty score, the product description, and the product category. The final requirement of this assignment was to perform a group by based on the product ID here and the customer ID, select a couple of columns they want and produce the purchase count. That could be very simple. We have to group by based on product ID and customer ID. But we are going to perform a couple of different queries, more elaborate queries. So the next one would be the query one. For the first query, we want the unique, the unique product description for all the products where product category is house and price greater than 400. If we go here in our query one function, you will see we can achieve the filtering by use dot filter or dot where. I like filter. And then we provide the conditions. The first condition is product category equals house and price greater than 400. And then we select the product description, but also we want a unique description. So we have to do a dot drop duplicates dot show. Let's run this and we, you will see what we are getting. That's the first query. It's, I think, pretty simple, nothing extraordinary or complicated, but I want to demonstrate how to use filter and drop, uh, drop duplicates, which give us the unique records. And here we are getting the product description. You will see kitchen roll, ice pack, cling film, detergent, kitchen knife, etc., etc. That's that's query one. Let's move to query two. And let's let, actually let me comment all the df dot show where it's not needed because it takes more time, right? And now we query two. So we are in query two. We want the number of customers who purchased products from product categories, food or house or BWS and date between 222.07.24 and 222.07.25 in descending order based on count. So we can use filter again and filter. We can have multiple conditions or we can use the easy which is like the equivalent in we have in SQL, house, BWS, food, veg, and then to date between, which is exactly the same in SQL, we are using between. First, we need to truncate the date using the to date function that you can import from the PySpark functions here. To date, not the trunk functions. The trunk function is not 
it doesn't does not truncate the time because here this this uh, column actually is a timestamp right it's not a date so we need to get only the date from timestamp and then do a between this those two dates and go by customer id and then we perform a count and in the end we use we apply dot sort descending as you can see this dec dsc actually this descending is a function that you can import from the PySpark sql functions as well and that would give you and we descending order based on count and that would give you the results for the second query let's save that and run this and let's see what we are getting for the second query actually it's this is a nice example of filtering and then use easing instead of multiple conditions and then we truncate the date between those two dates we go by customer id we perform a count and we perform a sort descending order uh, you can see here the results we have customer id and the count in descending order and that's the second query and the third one is for each product we need to find the most loyal customer ordered by category and here product category i mean and here let's comment this out and bring this back in query three oops i just spotted an error here this is not product category this should be loyalty score let me fix that now and save so here we need to apply an analytical function the equivalent of analytical function in oracle sql here it's called window function in i think it's the same for microsoft sql and you import this module here from PySpark SQL dot window import window and here this is how you form the partition by and ordered by statement that you will use using row number and then over windows spec here that we that's how we named this expression i mean you could just copy that and paste it straight inside the over clause and it would be the same but i think it's more read readable this way you you create the window um, the window expression here and then in you do a df dot with column row number or however you want to name the new column row number open brackets and close bracket over window expression and that will give you the row number so an extra column let me print that and this will give you an extra column here and we will see what we are getting so we want them for each product the most loyal customer right i we haven't specified enough conditions and i will tell you why because here now that we will get the results we will have multiple here we have the results and you can see for product 01 we have multiple customers with the same loyalty score of nine we have actually plenty of customers with the same loyalty score so who is coming first now c99 is the first one but there is no actually reason for that the it's just at random we are getting c99 as the customer with uh, the first customer with the highest loyalty score but it's not true because we have many with loyalty score of nine and their own number here assign we assign you know this sequence for the same for the same product id and we are getting if we get the first you know the first record with row number one we are going to get customer 
C99, which, yeah, we got this customer just by fluke. It's not, uh, we could get C44 or C80 or C31 or C44 again. And there is no actually any logic why we are getting the first record. Usually there would be another condition that would fix this problem. And but for now let's pick the first one and see what we are getting. So if I comment this and bring this back in, you will see now we filter this data frame and we are getting only row number equals one. So it will give us for each product, he will give us the customer, the most loyal customer. It's, and as I mentioned, it's a bit random how we are getting this customer. I mean, it's one of the most loyal customers, but between the most loyal customers, we could potentially select another, another one. But let's see what we are getting here. So for each product now, detergent, we are getting cast the most loyal customer, which, which is C99 for this product. Kitchen roll, C99 again. For bean liners, we're getting C31. For sour gels, we're getting C31. For scented candles, we're getting C99 etc etc so for each product we are getting the most loyal customer this concludes our video i will upload the code on github so you can play around with if you are preparing for an interview it's a good exercise if you enjoyed the video click the like button and subscribe to the channel